In this video, we will be looking at Webpack, Webpacker, and Sprockets, and which one you should use in your Ruby on Rails application. So in Rails 6, Webpacker has become the standard, and it uses a underlying technology called Webpack, which compiles modules or dependencies into static assets. So in this case, we have JavaScript, style sheets, and images, and it outputs them in a static format for our application. So in Ruby on Rails 6, we use the Webpacker gem. So this comes installed by default, and this is used to take the Webpack technology and make it work within Ruby on Rails. So what do we have before we had Webpack? So before we had Webpack, we had Sprockets, and Sprockets basically does the same thing. So Sprockets is an asset packaging system, which means that it takes the assets that we have, compiles them into a static version, for us to use in our application. Very much like the webpack that we are using in Ruby on Rails 6. So we know that both of these technologies are doing the same thing. However, the way that we use them is slightly different. Using sprockets, we have a manifest JS file, and we'll look at that later in this video. And the method in which we include our files into a compilation file is slightly different also. So we use the require method and we pass the name of the file that we want to require. But there are also options for sprockets to include the entire directory. So we can require a directory or a link directory and a link tree. And you've probably seen some of these used in Ruby on Rails 5 applications or even Ruby on Rails 4 applications. So the decision by the Ruby on Rails team to adopt Webpack and Webpacker in place of sprockets has made a lot of people confused about how to set up their code base and how to install dependencies. So this video will be showing you a approach to going back to the old version of sprockets within your Ruby on Rails 6 application. So in order to demonstrate this video, I'm going to set up a very basic application. So I'm creating a new Ruby on Rails 6 application and we'll see what files are included in our application and how we can change that to use the old approach of sprockets. So one thing to point out before we get into this is that I'm not recommending that you use sprockets instead of Yarn, Webpacker, and Webpack. It is completely fine to use those, and I think it's actually a better idea to adopt the technology rather than stand against it. But I think it's also useful for people who are upgrading applications from, say, Rails 5 up to Rails 6, it's much easier for them to use sprockets since everything had already been set up that way in the past. So whether or not you use Webpack or sprockets, it's completely up to yourself, but it's good to know how you can switch between the two if you need to do that. So we've got a new application open, and you'll notice that the JavaScripts folder is missing from the assets directory. And that has been moved outside of the assets directory into its own folder. And now we have this packs folder with the application JS inside. So we refer to this application file as a pack. And you'll notice here the code inside is slightly different from how we did it using the sprockets and asset pipeline in Rails 4 and 5. So I'm going to quickly set up our application. And to do that, we will set up a route and a method within a controller that points to our homepage. So this will just be used to demonstrate how to make this change. So I'm just quickly setting this up in the application controller. Now I normally wouldn't do this in the application controller, but this is just a demo. So let's render a view, and this will be within the layouts folder. So if we look now at our application layout, so this is within the views you'll see the JavaScript pack tag. So this is different than we had in the previous versions of Ruby on Rails. So previously we had a JavaScript include tag. So the pack tag will load the file directly from the JavaScript packs folder, and it loads this application.js. So if we want to load a file from our assets directory, then we will need to create a new folder in here to store our JavaScript. So I'm going to use the same naming that we did in the previous versions of Rails. And we will create a file in here called application.js. 
And this would be the file that includes all of the dependencies and we will use it to create our final static version of JavaScript file. So in here you would normally see a require tree and this loads all of the files on the directory but you can also require a single file and we can call this example file that we will create now. Now the .js is optional here. I've included it in this example but you do not need to include the .js. So let's create this new example file within our JavaScript folder. So in our example JavaScript file, we will create a JavaScript alert just simply for the purpose of telling us that this file is loading correctly. So this file that we have set up is going to be used by Sprockets. So adding all of our JavaScript files in this way will prevent the need to be using Webpacker in our application. So now let's go back to our layouts folder and we will create the home page that we are using here as a default. So I'll quickly set up our Rails database now, but you could in fact modify the database config file to not need a database, but I'm simply just doing this to keep things moving. So our database is set up and it's still giving me this message about Rails DB migrate. So I'll run that command again, because I'm not sure if it worked or not. And we'll open up our application now. So let's start the Rails server. And then we will open this up in the browser. So our homepage is loading in the browser. So back in our application layout file now, let's change the JavaScript tag. So currently it is JavaScript pack tag. But you'll notice here the stylesheet link tag, it pulls from the stylesheets folder in the assets directory. We can do the same thing with the JavaScript using the JavaScript include tag. So the include tag will pull it from this folder. And we have one thing that we forgot to do here, which was to modify the manifest file in our assets config folder. So let's do that now. Let's go to assets config manifest.js. And you will see here that we have the images and the style sheets. So this manifest file tells the sprockets gem which directories to compile the files from. So we'll include a link directory for JavaScripts and it will have the .js ending. So now once we restart the server and reload the page, we will see that our JavaScript file is now working. So we've got this JavaScript alert. So using the manifest file, adding the directory under assets, and changing the tag within the application view, that allows us to include the JavaScript using our sprockets like we did in the previous versions of Rails. So that's gonna do it for this video. Hopefully you guys have found this helpful. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the channel and like this video. And if you want to learn more about Ruby on Rails and the Ruby language, check out my website using the link in the description below. So other than that, have a great day ahead and I will see you all in the next video.